I like about low riding, and if I could describe it, it's a form of expression. You express who you are. I think a lot of times what you drive shows who you really are. If you want to look slick and cool, your car's going to look slick and cool just like you. And that's what I like about it. Since I was 17, I started buying cars. The very, very first lowrider I ever bought was a 51 Chevy two-door. I remember when I was 17 and I wanted a car really bad, I just like pretty much determined to get it some way, somehow. So pretty much anything that I had that was mine, I started selling to make up that budget to buy that car. So I sold my bike that I got for Christmas. I sold my PlayStations. I scraped up every dollar I could to buy that first car. The car that I'm driving is a 92 Cadillac Brougham. It's all original, it has original interior. It has the original paint. It's just the paint's been buffed and, you know, just spruced up a little bit. It has 72 spoke wire wheels on it. I redid the top, put some sound systems in it. If I were to say why I actually got into low riding or what led me that way, I had a lot of friends that growing up, some of them were starting to join gangs or just, you know, getting into drugs. And I had to pretty much choose either between buying drugs or, or drinking or buying parts for my car that I really wanted to get done. So in a sense, I could honestly probably say low riding was what kept me from probably steering in the wrong direction in life. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I live in actually in the same neighborhood I grew up in, in Koreatown. My family's pretty much, I have my dad and my mom. I grew up with both of them. I'm thankful to have that. They weren't like strict. I mean, my, they were firm, but they were fair. My mom was very easygoing. My mom was probably the nicer one. So it was like one of those deals where like, if you really wanted something, you'd probably go to mom first because she'll probably say, yeah. Because if you ask dad, he'll probably say no. So I'm the youngest of three brothers. I'm probably the only one that picked up like the automotive bug from my dad. I just remember as a kid going with him because he had a shop and I would go with him like on Saturdays just to hang out and supposedly help him when I was just really cleaning his tools and handing him stuff. But it was just that bonding moment with my dad that I had. And that's what kind of was planting that seed for the automotive thing. My dream was to have an Impala. That's what I really wanted. And when I had a chance to get one, I finally got one and I was just like happy. The car is a 65 Impala convertible. It was a Fuchsia candy pink. It had color matched wire wheels. It had custom interior. The motor had worked on it, the hydraulics. It was a full done street car. I rolled the wheels off of that car. I could go from being in the valley to Crenshaw, to Compton, to Watts. It was everywhere. I went everywhere in that car. So like five, six years ago, I was in my, in my 65 Impala and I was on my way back from Hollywood. Coming off the freeway, my gas pedal got stuck and I went right into a wall. It was just bad because I, sh I, I wrecked that car. I wrecked it pretty bad. When that happened, I was honestly like just in shock because I, I was just like, no, this just, this just didn't happen. It didn't happen. Like, no way this just happened. And I knew right off the bat that that car was going to be down for a while or if it was even rebuildable because it was pretty bad the way I hit because the whole front pretty much of the car was gone. When that car went down, my dream went down because to know that you achieved something and you did something that you really wanted and then for it to just be gone in, a, in an instant. So it's not just a car. It's part of who you are. It's part of you. It's part of your persona. When it happened, I think a part of me got lost. It might sound silly, but it almost feel like, like somebody like important in your life was gone. If it wasn't a, for the club, then, you know, I probably wouldn't have been in the position I was at, but they were able to come and help me out and they got me out of the jam I was in. The club I'm from is called Strictly Family Car Club. We're, we're like a small club that we're, all of us are pretty much based out of LA, the LA area. It's not so much just a group of guys. It literally becomes like, like a second family. We're all there for each other and we help each other out. And that's what it's all about. After high school, I pretty much didn't really know what I wanted to do. I started going to, to trade tech and I, I figured, you know, I want to do something with cars too. So while I was going to trade tech, at the same time, I was like kind of being like this amateur barbecue enthusiast. I would cook on the weekends 
And then come Monday when I'd be back in class, I'd tell the guys, oh, look what I did. Look, I cooked this or I cooked that. So I said, you know what? Just on weekends, I'm gonna mess around and start selling it. So I would invite friends over, we started making it, and then they would post it like online or on different social media websites. It started getting like a little bit of a following. Then I got a notification from a food blogger for the Eater LA. After they did an article on me, it just blew up. I started getting lines outside my house, people like messaging me at all hours of the day and night that they wanted food. It went literally like skyrocketed overnight almost. So the name of my, my barbecue pop-up company is uh, Ragtop Friends Barbecue. I wanted to pretty much incorporate who I was into what I was doing. So that's how the whole name Ragtop came from because it was from my 65 convertible. Mainly I do what's, I guess like traditional barbecue, traditional American barbecue, which is like ribs, brisket, pork, you know, beef ribs, pretty much anything you could think about that's barbecue or that can barbecue, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> From the meat, everything I hand pick, everything I, I'm very nitpicky with what I get. And then the seasoning, same thing. I don't buy seasoning. It's not a commercial seasoning. I make it myself. The sauce as well was made and developed. <laughs> I didn't buy that sauce either. From everything, I like to be hands-on with everything. When I started at first, I started with just like a small little grill that I just kind of set up to cook indirect. So I approached a friend of mine that he works with blacksmith work and iron work, and I told him the concept and the idea of what I wanted. And we ended up making a custom smoker, and it, it just, that's what we ended up using now as my equipment. I'll post online on Instagram, like what I'm gonna have, when I'm gonna have it, or where I'm gonna be at. And I'll start getting like direct messages, like out of nowhere. And then it's people placing orders at what they want and everything. Sometimes I'll, I'll literally sell out like before I even start. So I think probably like the coolest moments I ever had due to the, doing the whole barbecue deal was I got to meet Graham Elliott, which is like a master chef, but he was like super cool. Like I love, I like watching him on TV. You know, all the shows he's in, I pretty much watch him. I also got to meet Jay Leno. I had the honor to barbecue for him too. And from what I heard, they, they all loved it too. Well, really, when I first started with this, it, the intentions really were to make just a little bit of extra cash to get the car going back again, to kind of get it back on the road, get it to exactly the way I wanted it. Hopefully, pretty soon, it'll be back out, you know, due to the barbecue. I honestly didn't think it was going to get this big or that much attention. But now that I think about it, I think, like, my plans are to kind of lean more towards the mobile side of business. So maybe possibly, like, a food truck or something would be kind of what I, I want to shoot for. If I could get one life lesson out of this, it's pretty much that if you really want something and you're really determined to do it, just go out and do it. Do whatever you need to do to get to where you need to be. Everybody is good and useful for something. If I could do it, pretty much anybody else could do it. My name is Fernando Carrillo. I'm a pit master and I'm a lowrider role model.